climate change. One that has gained my personal attention is stratospheric aerosol injection, or SAI. A method of seeding the stratosphere with particles that can help reflect the sun's heat in much the same way that volcanic eruptions do. An SAI program could limit global temperature increases, reducing some risks associated with higher temperatures and providing the world economy additional time to transition from fossil fuels. Tomorrow's news today. All right, I wanted to get to this piece because we've talked about this some, and you can just type in Council on Foreign Relations, Geoengineering, Bill Gates funding weather manipulation, exactly the patents we found, exactly that the, the, the airlines don't even really know except the executives. They had aluminum salts, uh, barium. They had all this stuff to the, to the engines and the gas. It's kerosene, basically. You think of jet fuel as explosive. It's not. It's actually lighter burning uh, than gasoline. And it then aerosolizes and creates increased nuclei. So, yes, it's actually ice crystals out behind, but there's nuclei in cloud seeding to create it. So I remember like, oh, man, it was like 20 years ago I was getting calls. This one guy was running a DARPA program, and he said, I can't tell you everything, but it's secret. But these Doppler antennas were putting in around the country under a federal grant so the quote everybody has tornado watch. They said the power is 10 to 20 times what you need for Doppler. And, he, and they said, I don't know if I can say the guy's name. I shouldn't. He's actually been on the show. But the point is they're using it to fry the atmosphere with these aluminum dioxides and bariums and salts and I'm like, okay, you're crazy. This is like 24 years ago. I'm on air, and I've got guys that got engineering degrees pulling up. They're giving me all this stuff at the station. And then a decade later, Dubai has the exact same antenna arrays, and it says they're turning the desert green with these. That's going on. So I wanted to bring Mike Adams in, who's an engineer and scientist, about this because I'm going to play this clip of John Brennan, former head of the CIA, deep stater, where they know they can't hide this anymore. So they then admit they've got it, they want to roll it out, they want to make it public, but other governments don't like it. Well, yeah, we have a treaty. So everything he's saying is, knowing that the audience of, of, of actual controllers know what's happening, but he's, he's, he's basically talking about the problems without saying the specifics of them. But when you know the facts, it's incredible. So I never knew this video existed. I knew that there were speeches he gave and others gave, CFR.org. But I didn't know he'd given the speech, so here's just part of it. Another example is the array of technologies, often referred to collectively as geoengineering, that potentially could help reverse the warming effects of global climate change. One that has gained my personal attention is stratospheric aerosol injection, or SAI, a method of seeding the stratosphere with particles that can help reflect the sun's heat in much the same way that volcanic eruptions do. An SAI program could limit global temperature increases, reducing some risks associated with higher temperatures and providing the world economy additional time to transition from fossil fuels. This process is also relatively inexpensive. The National Research Research Council estimates that a fully deployed SAI program would cost about $10 billion yearly. As promising as it may be, moving forward on SAI would also raise a number of challenges for our government and for the international community. On the technical side, greenhouse gas emission reductions would still have to accompany SAI to address other climate change effects, such as ocean acidification, because SAI alone would not remove greenhouse gases from the atmosphere. On the geopolitical side, the technology's potential to alter weather patterns and benefit certain regions of the world at the expense of other regions could trigger sharp opposition by some nations. Others might seize on SAI's benefits and back away from their commitment to carbon dioxide reductions. And as with other breakthrough technologies, global norms and standards are lacking to guide the deployment and implementation of SAI and other geoengineering initiatives. Now I could go on and on and on and on about the things that fascinate me, but rather than talk about them, I thought I'd stop here and start the conversation with Judy and then I can take...